As always, ladies and gentlemen, I so appreciate each and every one of the leaders that are getting up every single day because I know you're practicing successful habits. I said it before, and it bears repeating that success is not about what you do today. It is about what you do on a daily basis. That being said, the purpose of every call is to simply just line up with one of my early mentors in life, Mr. Jim Rohn, who said if you want to be successful in life, you need to talk about the things that matter to the people that care. And if you're on the call this morning, guess what? You're the ones that care. And today, while we're contemplating our next book that we'll start on next week, I thought I'd go back to one of my quickly uh, learning to be favorites, which is An Enemy Called Average by John Mason. Within this book, he shares with us how to conquer this enemy that we call average. He started out by saying mediocrity is a region bound on the north by compromise on the south by indecision, on the east by past thinking, and on the west by a lack of vision. He said, I went to bed one night knowing I had a speech to give early the next morning. When I awoke, the first thought on my mind was not what time is it or what will I wear. Instead, it was the phrase an enemy called average. In that moment, before my feet hit the floor, I knew that God had given me the title for the book that had been stirring within me for such a long time. Think about it. He said, this book is written for people who want to quit so that they won't, and for the people who want to go to another level so that they can. I believe in my heart of hearts that each of us has been given a certain mixture of abilities and opportunities that makes us unique. No mixture is insignificant. Those matchless qualities that God has placed within all of us causes us to yearn to be above average and extraordinary. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves every day, just like God asked Adam in Genesis 3, where art thou? He is still asking that question today, where, are, where we are concerning the gifts and talents that each and every one of us has been given. So today I'm going to cover two of the nuggets. Nugget number nine, which says the best time of the day is now. And nugget number 10, fear and worry are interest paid in advance on something you may never, ever own. Think about it. The best time of the day is now. Let me make this statement. Procrastination is a killer. When you, when you kill time, you begin to kill ideas and directions that I believe our creator has placed within each and every one. If you wait for per- per perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Let me say that again. If you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. The first step to overcoming procrastination is to eliminate all excuses for not taking immediate action. I cannot tell you, as an entrepreneur in the network marketing space, how many many times I've heard people give the excuse to what they're waiting on to get started. They're waiting for all the ducks to line up and get in the road. Let me be the bearer of bad news. Those ducks are never going to get all lined up and in a row. Think about it. The first step to overcoming procrastination is to eliminate all excuses for not taking immediate actions. The second step is to be less busy. What do I mean by that? Everyone is always on the move. People are moving forward, backwards, and sometimes nowhere at all as though they were on a treadmill. The mistake most people make is thinking that the main goal of life is to stay busy. Such thinking is a trap. What is important is not whether or not you're busy, but whether you are progressing. The question is one of activity versus accomplishment. And one of the things we've always taught as an entrepreneur in the network marketing space, and, you know, not just activity, but IPA, which is income producing activity. If you look at what takes up the, the bulk of your day, if you analyze and look at it, is it moving me closer toward my dream? And if the answer is no, then you need to focus on what's going to get me to where I want to go. A gentleman named John Henry Faber conducted an experiment with procrastinatory caterpillar. That's, a, that's actually a, a caterpillar called a processinary caterpillar, so named for their habits 
of blindly following each other. In his experiments, Fabre placed these tiny creatures in a circle for 24 hours. The caterpillars dutifully followed one another around and around and around. Then Fabre placed the caterpillars around a saucer full of pine needles, which is their favorite food. For six days, the mindless creatures moved around and around the saucer, finally dying for starvation and exhaustion, even though an abundance of choice food was located less than two inches away. For all of the activity, the caterpillars accomplished nothing. Think about it. Leaders need to be known as those who accomplish great things for a cause, not as those who simply talk about it. Procrastinators are good at talking, not doing. Mark Twain said, noise produces nothing. Often a hen who has merely laid an egg cackles as though she has laid an asteroid. Let's be like the apostles. Still today, they are not known for their policies, their procedures, their theories, or their excuses, but for their acts. We call them the acts of the apostles. Many people say they are waiting for God. But in most cases, I mean, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. God is waiting for them. The cost of growth is always less than the cost of stagnation. As Edmund Burke said, the only thing that's necessary for evil to prevail is for good men and good women to do nothing. Think about it. Procrastination is a tool of the enemy to hold us back and to make us miss, I mean, all the blessing timing in our lives. The desire of the lazy man, according to my favorite book of all time, Proverbs 21 and 25, he said, the desire of a lazy man kills him for his hands refuse to labor. The longer we take the act on our direction as leaders, the more unclear it becomes. So my advice to you today is to take action now. And nugget number 10, fear and worry are interest paid in advance on something you may never own. See, when you don't take action, ladies and gentlemen, that's what action causes, I mean, that fear and that worry and that stress that happens in people's lives. I mean, you'll be amazed. I've read many books about what causes diseases and different ailments and different ills in people's lives, and you'll be amazed how so many things. Doctors will tell you a cause from worrying and stress for things that may or may not ever happen. See, fear is a poor chisel for carving out tomorrow. If you're worried about tomorrow, I have good news for you. Worry isn't reality. Worry is really the triumph of fear over faith and not the opposite. See, you've got to understand if I'm a person that's optimistic, I have to constantly have my faith overcome my fear. But if you're worrying, it's the opposite taking place in your life. Worry is your triumph of fear over your faith. Think about it. When we worry, we blow a situation out of proportion that might never come to pass. An old Swedish proverb says, Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. Worry is simply the misuse of the creative imagination I believe our creator has placed within each and every one of us. The word worry is derived from an Anglo-Saxon term meaning to strangle or to choke off. And that's what happens when we worry, ladies and gentlemen. When we spend time worrying, we, we choke off our goals and our dreams, and the things that we could be accomplishing. There is no question that worry and fear choke off the positive creativity our creator has given each and every one of us. When we fear, when fear rises in our minds, we should expect the opposite in our lives. We should expect faith to rise in our hearts to shield us against worrisome thoughts, things are seldom as they seem, ladies and gentlemen. Think about it. As we dwell on matters beyond our control, a negative effect sets in. Too much analysis will always lead to paralysis. We've seen people that have never had success as an entrepreneur because they suffer from a condition of analysis paralysis. The bottom line, 
Just do it. One of the best slogans ever created by Nike. Just do it, man. I mean, so many times people want to know all the answers, and you've got to recognize the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet, they say yes, and then they figure it out. And that's what you got to do, ladies and gentlemen. Stop spending so much time and interest in worrying and just do it. Things are seldom as they seem. I mean, as we dwell on matters beyond our control, a negative effect sets in. Too much analysis will always lead to paralysis. My favorite book of all time says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved, never respond out of fear, and never fear to respond. Action, acts, attack fear. Inaction reinforces it. So don't worry and don't fear. Worry is a route that leads from somewhere to nowhere. So never, ever let it direct your life. So to end the call today, I want to encourage you with one of my favorite motivational quotes that I've recently learned over the last several months, and it's called a servant leadership poem. He said, my training is the reason that I survive. It keeps me grounded in hard times. It keeps me set on the goal at hand and gives me the strength to be a better man. It gives me the courage to humble myself, to lead by example, always lending to help knowing that I can't do it on my own, that it takes many hands to make a leader strong. See, the skill that defines me, not many possess. It is harder to come by and even harder to rest. To lead by servitude is not an easy task, but it always makes more bonds that will always last. See, the reason that I say it is that it's so very, very rare is not because of any burden that a leader might bear. No, not in fact, to do with a leader at all, but by being a servant now, that's why I stand tall. Ladies and gentlemen, I am mightily encouraged on a Tuesday morning walk because every day now I'm being surrounded with leaders that are waking up and that realize they were spending too much time in worry and not enough time in action. And as a result, they're at the cusp. They're at the tipping point of going from good to great from zero to hero, and from mediocre to magnificent. So let's stay focused upon the task at hand. And for that reason, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you guys, not just at the top. We're going to see you guys over the top. And always remember, it takes leaders who have a vision to lead the people who have a dream. God bless and have yourself a tremendous Tuesday.